Let's discuss the U.S. strategy with, uh, on Iran with retired Marine Lieutenant Colonel Dakota Wood and former Naval Intelligence Officer Don Brammer. Thanks to both of you for joining us. Um, Lieutenant Colonel Wood, let me start with you. Sure. Where do you think we stand after all of this? Do you think that we are in safer territory vis-a-vis -vis Iran, or do you think that things have gotten more dangerous? Well, I don't, I don't really like the safer versus dangerous. I think conditions have changed, and uh, uh, President Trump has changed those conditions. He's basically said, look, we're not going to tolerate attacks on U.S. personnel. Uh, perhaps that increases, uh, you know, this rest of kind of threatening uh, action from Iran, but that's just what you have to deal with. You know, it's like a criminal cartel comes into a city and the police push back. The cartel doesn't willingly you know, pull back its operations. It's going to fight back. So it's just one of those things that you have to push through to show that uh, Iran is we're not going to tolerate this kind of terrorist activity, mm -hmm. attacks against the United States and supporting terrorist elements. Don, do you agree with that analysis? Absolutely. And, you know, every threat that is coming out of Iran, you know, I look at it as something they've already done. They've already attacked our ships. They've already attacked our, our drones. They've attacked the oil fields in Saudi. They've even planned terrorist attacks in the United States here in Washington, D.C. back in 2011. So what has changed? Nothing. Everything that they're doing or say they're doing, they've already done. They've continued doing. That's no change in their rhetoric nor their actions. Yeah. I had Benjamin Netanyahu on the brain because I was looking at this evidence that he brought forth a while ago saying that Iran had been going ahead um, with all of their nuclear plans. And in fact, this fall, both the BBC and Reuters confirmed a report from the International Atomic Energy Agency that they had finally gone in and done testing in this what what the Iranians said was a carpet cleaning factory in Tehran. And in fact, they did find uranium particles. We haven't seen a lot of press on this. And at the same time, um, Lieutenant Colonel Wood, you, you hear people saying that Oh, Iran was, they were being peaceful, that they were abiding by the nuclear deal. And then all of a sudden, you know, President Trump turned on it. And now we've had this escalation. Why aren't we, why aren't we looking at this other evidence that they were violating it all along? Well, I think we're not historically rooted. I mean, 40 years of activity with Iran propagating terrorism across the Middle East, attacking U.S. personnel, attacking embassies. The whole Iranian nuclear deal was a sham to begin with. They never allowed inspections of their secret military facilities. Uh, you know, it just it's been one action after another. And we finally have a president who is willing to say enough is enough. We're going to change the uh, way we're approaching this from pure diplomacy and sanctions to actual military uh, reprisals of some type. I mean, it's Iran. It's attacked Saudi oil fields. They attacked international tankers. They've taken people hostage. Mm -hmm. uh, so when is enough enough? And I agree with the other commenter here that uh, this is nothing new from Iran. It's consistent behavior. And finally, the United States is standing up and saying we're not going to put up with any more of this. Don, I mean, I mean that, that has been the binary choice that so many commentators have talked about since this happened, that we tried buying them off. Now we tried saying this is enough. Do you think that there is support in the global community, though, for the president's approach now? I think the global community will be cautious, but I think overall, if you look at our allies, especially the United Kingdom, you know, they are standing behind us in this. In fact, that they are seen as an ally of the United States, so any threat against us, they should consider a threat against them. Uh, in the long term, when it is the U.S. forces on the ground and other allies on the ground, they are just as much at risk as, as our own troops are, and we should take that in consideration, as should they. Dakota Wood, Don Brammer, thanks yep. to both of you for joining us. Our pleasure. Thank you. Coming up, President Trump calling for 